Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a beautiful weekend, almost totally in the books. Things were gorgeous across the area today, much more sunshine than we have seen in quite some time. And again, a nice chance to dry out for a little bit. Saw a ton of people over Big River Crossing today, a lot of car washes busy, a lot of people out at the city parks around Memphis today. Absolutely wonderful day just to get out and just kind of shake off that cabin fever by just a little bit. And looking at some drier conditions in the near future, unfortunately, as always, we're going to go back in and see the potential of some more rainfall coming our way. Not a great deal and not enough to cause any problems for any flooding situation here in the Mid-South, so that's good news. But a ton of problems back to our north with major flooding going on. Some comparisons to the 1993 floods in the upper Midwest. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. We'll also show you more of your weather pictures. Thank you very much for sending those in. And we'll also take a look and see about National Weather Podcast Month. That's the month of March, and if you've never had a chance to take a look, at some of the great weather podcasts that are out there, including our own here at News Channel 3. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. But once again, a lot of people out and about for some very nice conditions out there. It will be a little bit of a brisk morning tomorrow for the kids that either are heading back to school or those who have spring break off this week. And Again, not everybody has the exact same spring break schedule out there. A few mid to upper 30s and clouds will be on the increase as a minor storm system passes on through the area. It's not huge, and again, a few clouds are going to be about all that we wind up with, but we could see, again, uh, the possibility of some more of those clouds out there, but that is really going to be about all that we wind up with. Almost spot on where we should be for high temperatures today. Beautiful day across the area. No rainfall. We're still ahead of the game for rainfall by nearly half a foot, so pretty good amount of rain surplus already. 36 degrees, our low temperature this morning, average 45, so we were well below that out there. Record low 25, which hasn't been broken since 1941, and today's record high 81, last setback in 1989. Now, across the Midwest, uh, back into around areas between, say, the Great Lakes and the Great Plains, the Red River, the Missouri River, a lot of the big rivers up here are in major flood stage right now, and all that water has got to go someplace, so all that's going to be draining its way on down. If you take a look at the key here, purple is major, red is moderate, orange is minor, and there's lots and dozens, if not hundreds, of these sites up here that are being measured with a lot of water draining its way down into the Mississippi, which means it's probably going to stay a little high on the Mississippi River here in Memphis for the next few days and weeks as it slowly drops its way on down just a little bit. But it's going to take a long while for that to happen. Add to that, if you're heading anywhere upwards, say, between Chicago, Omaha, into the Dakotas, Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, Des Moines, Anything around this area, there are several interstates that are underwater at this time. National Weather Service in Omaha had to evacuate their facilities last week because of a levee breach, and a lot of places are seeing the water still rising. So we could see, again, some major problems out there as we go into the next few days with travel. So again, anywhere in the Midwest, the upper Midwest, the upper Mississippi Valley, Definitely want to call and check and see what's going on up that direction, especially if you're heading out uh, for spring break into and around that area. Cynthia Mitchell Bradbury, 60 in Fraser. Thank you very much for that. John Hinnant, Hinnant, hope I'm saying that partially right, 44 degrees in Richmond, Virginia. I haven't been that back that way for quite some time. Paulette Anders, 57 degrees, cool in Bartlett. Thank you very much uh, for checking in there. If you've got weather reports, drop your location and your temperature and or wind speed reports into the uh, comment section down below, and we'll read some of those off as we go along. Beautiful view of sunset, fading glow of sunset on our transmitter tower camera for tonight. So we are seeing, again, some pretty cool and clear conditions out there. Should be, again, some great stargazing. Hopefully the uh, open house which hopefully is going on right now at Ole Miss at Kennan Observatory, getting some good viewing conditions down that direction. So looking pretty nice into tonight. Speaking of which, down in Oxford, we've got some decently clear skies out there. And again, if you'd like to take a look through the telescopes of the Kennan Observatory, right back over on the southern part of campus, 
uh, the Kennet Observatory holding their open house right now. So if you're in Oxford, you may have a chance to get there and look at the moon, Mars, several other planets out there, also star clusters and nebulae that are taking place again right now in Oxford. A bit on the brisk side, temperatures back in the mid-50s, but calm winds, bone dry humidity. It's very comfortable out there with 41% humidity, humidity levels in the 20s out there. Uh, for earlier on today, so very much on the mild side there. Collierville, 54. Ronnie Williams, thank you very much for that one. Grady Bennett, 57. Claire in Berclair, thank you very much. Jeffrey Griffiths, uh, what is it, 50, 56 in Walls, thank you very much. Two-point typeface and bifocals don't mix. Uh, 55 in Bells, No Wind, Jen Hendricks Cobb, thank you very much for that one. Storm Tracker 3S radar, complete and total clean sweep, very dry air across the Mid South. Closest cloud cover to us, a little bit of clouds around central Arkansas, most of it down toward the Gulf Coast, and a minor storm system back to the north of us. That's going to be plowing through the area tomorrow, but chances of rain, even though it's up around portions of Kansas City, St. Joe, and around Boonville, Missouri, we're not really expecting to see too much of anything else in the way of rainfall. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. 50s across the area for right now, and winds variable, fairly light, should be light winds overnight, so not that much uh, to worry about there. Andrew C. Elder, 57 degrees in High Point Terrace, light to no wind. Thank you very much for that weather report there, and welcome everybody uh, who's checking in for tonight. Running the numbers into this evening. If you're going to be out and about, this is what you're going to be looking for. Winds mainly out of the north and 40s and 50s by News Channel 3 at 10. Now, tomorrow morning, this minor storm system passes on through, but it's going to be surrounded on all sides by very dry air. Now, the, what happens when that goes on, the computer takes a look at any amount of moisture coming on through and says, oh, look, rainfall. There's going to be rain with all this. Well, maybe up in the hills of Arkansas and southern Missouri, there might be a raindrop or two down this direction toward the river basin area. I doubt we're going to be seeing too much of anything else, more clouds than anything else, but the computer gets very hyper-eager to put some rainfall in the forecast. I'm just not really seeing much of anything as we go throughout the rest of tomorrow, and even by the time it hits the Mid-South area by about mid to late tomorrow morning, it's going to be just light amounts of cloud cover, if that, and light amounts of scattered showers back to the west of us into portions of Arkansas for tomorrow. A little bit cooler as well. Winds, again, coming out of the north will give us some breezier conditions briefly and some cooler temperatures by just a little bit. So tomorrow will be much cooler than today by almost 10 degrees once again. Not exactly an Arctic blast, but once again, it's going to be decently chilly out there uh, for right now and mainly dry with those clouds kind of coming and going across the area. We'll stay below normal on Tuesday for the first day of spring. Spring officially begins Wednesday evening right before sunset. So we may see some more scattered showers with another storm system coming on through. Wednesday night into Thursday, storm system called a clipper. It's named after the ships of old which made their way around the southern part of South America very quickly and cut a lot of time off by going so fast. These clipper systems zoom on through the area and as they do, they give us brief chances of rainfall. So we'll see some chances of some scattered showers Wednesday and Thursday. Not impressed with the amounts we're going to be getting out of this, so just spotty sprinkles there. First weekend of spring, looking very mild, temperatures in the 60s. And by Saturday night next and Sunday, we may see the possibility of more showers. Next Monday, the first full week of springtime, starts off with some possible thunderstorms. Way, way too early to talk about anything in the way of severe weather, but we will be watching this because we are in the prime season for severe weather. The number one season for us is right now, and we need to be ready for that just to be on the safe side. Looking at some pretty mild temperatures out there as well into the next few days, so we're not seeing too much in the way of anything frozen, and only a couple of 30s out there at best, so just not that much to be... Uh, shown out there. Orlando, Florida, David Sides, welcome to the show. O'Neill Byram Sr., 51 degrees in Maidon, Tennessee, if I'm pronouncing that right. If it's not, I apologize on that. I'm trying to learn all the pronunciations of the towns around here. You think with a name like Onik, I would know better, but you never can tell. Uh, Charles Stanton, good evening from Milwaukee, as we are warmer up here than the Midwest. I saw that you had some 
pretty good amounts of temperature changes up there. March is National Weather Podcast Month. In other news, there is such a thing as National Weather Podcast Month. I didn't know about this until just about a week or so ago. And if you'd like to take a look at our podcast and Tim and Jim talking to you about life in front of the camera when severe weather warnings are issued, download or listen to Tornado Alert, Emotional Terror. It's available again at iTunes, Spotify, and at WREG.com. Latest edition of Your Environment is processing right now. We'll be uploading it to YouTube so you can take a look at it a little bit later on. In this week's edition, we take a look at the youth climate strike from last week and the pros and cons of that and what you might think about what the kids were doing out there. So stay tuned for more on that. Plus, about 12 days until Earth Hour, your opportunity to learn how to use less energy, consume less in the way of fossil fuels and our energy supply, and also save you money in the long run. So stay tuned for more on that. That'll be at wreg.com slash weather, our own echo blog, your environment coming up a little later. All right, weather picks, Candy B, 831. A couple of weeks ago, beautiful sunset, I'm assuming, from Bass Landing in and around the Walls area. Thank you very much for that one. James R. Gulledge, very prolific photographer from up around uh, the Humboldt area. Nice view of some of the foliage blooming by just a little bit out there. Thank you very much for that. And a high of 55 degrees on Saturday, so decently mild there. A lot of blue skies for the Beale Street St. Patrick's Day Parade. Kelvin Gates taking some very nice pictures down on Beale Street for the parade on Saturday. And Sarah D. Garland, nice view of some of the budding foliage around the Memphis Botanic Garden. Thank you very much uh, for sending that one. And got tons more across the area. We're posting as much as we possibly can. So thank you again for sending those in. If you've got weather pictures, we want to see them so we can show them right here. If you want to send them to us, there's many ways to do so. Or you can drop me an email right here at austin.onic at wreg.com. And thanks to everybody for all those great pictures out there. My forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations. And, of course, I'll be back on with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning, bright and early at 6 a.m. Lots to talk about on Sports Chat tomorrow and the next couple of days as the NCAA tournament gets going on. The women's brackets will be announced tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. So if you'd like to learn more about what's happening, Bob and Josh will be on Talkback Live a.m. 730 and 1600. If you can't listen to them because you're too far out of the radio range area in the Mid-South, dial them up online at TalkbackLiveNetwork.org. A lot of great guests, a lot of great sports chat time, so tune in and listen to hear what goes on with them as we go into a brand new week with a tournament coming up. March Madness is on the way. If you'd like to see more about weather where the troops are, join me on my Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter pages as we take a look at places like Afghanistan. It's our little way of saying thank you to everybody out there wearing the uniform and, again, serving their country in various places around the world. Some rain and some pretty good amounts of wind around Herat and Kandahar in western parts of Afghanistan, 30s and 40s around Kabul and Faizabad into around the eastern parts of the country. So if you'd like to see more about that, join me at about a quarter till 9 o'clock, about a half an hour from now, and you'll be able to hear more about various outposts out there. If you've got friends or loved ones serving in the military, let me know where they are in general, and I'll see if I can do a weather report for their particular location, fort, or base. And stay tuned for more on that with News Channel 3 as we keep you updated here on the home front. All right, one more check of the forecast. For tonight, again, we're going to be looking at the temperatures dropping through about the lower 40s into tomorrow morning. The clouds will be on the increase as that minor storm system approaches, so we'll see some more clouds just kind of drifting on through the area. But I think we should be back to sunshine as we go into later on tomorrow afternoon. So a little brisk tomorrow, so plan ahead for that. But it doesn't look like any frost out there for right now. I'll have an update on the forecast tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. We'll have, of course, a forecast update with Todd Demers early on daybreak starting at 4.30. And, of course, Tim and Jim are back with more forecast information coming up on News Channel 3, first at 4, Monday afternoon and evening. Again, any questions or concerns, please email me at austin.onic at wreg.com and join us again at wreg.com slash weather for your complete forecast, climate information, 
podcast information, all kinds of neat stuff. Again, wreg.com slash weather for more information. Thanks to everybody for joining us for tonight, and thanks a lot for stopping on by with your weather reports. Do appreciate that, and stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 as we close out the St. Patrick's holiday weekend. Live and direct, I'm meteorologist Austin Onick from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you for joining us. Stick around for more with News Channel 3 as we close out the rest of the holiday weekend.